these guys just get up. Ooh! Boy, oh boy. Man hater living up to his name. Welcome to Unleash the Beast, Mr. Kimsey. Jose Vitor Leme, make sure we all never blink. Caden Bunch wins Tucson. Diaz proves why he's the number one rider in the world. Casio Diaz takes home his first career win in St. Louis. Brady Fielder has done it. Pacheco doing what Pacheco does. Austin Richardson caps off his weekend in Cap City. Austin Richardson, he goes back to back. January in Chicago is always interesting, but the frightful weather outside shouldn't be a problem at all because it's about to get delightful inside Allstate Arena as the PBR returns for its annual visits. World number two, Casio Diaz hopes that by ordering up the IHOP special, he'll be sufficiently fueled to surge back to the top. While Caden Loud plans to avoid seeing stars, but yearns to wave the stars and stripes as he takes on God Bless America. Welcome to the Windy City, where the nastiness outside is matched only by the full demeanor inside. Well, he won a big event this week in Denver, Colorado, Court McFadden and Nightmare. Help him, Chicago. Come on, make some noise. How about that? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep. <laughs> Play with him. Oh, he ain't messing around, Jared. That bull make it his debut. And remember right now, folks, as we get this bull out of the arena, the score to beat is 84. The numbers are in for Court McFadden. How about 86 and three quarters? He's 18, his name is John Krimber. Look at the rookie go. Welcome the 18 year old rookie. Eight seconds at a time for Krimber. Watch this Bass Pro Shops replay. He's so good. This bull threw a lot at him right here. See him moving forward, jumping and rolling, and it was no problem for John Krimber right there. 83 and a half points. Had hip surgery, but he's back, and the Cooper Tires Cowboys sliding up on a bull called Ninja Cowboy. Keep going. Let's go, Mason. Finish it. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. Do me a favor, say welcome back to Mason Taylor tonight, will you? That's a big ride for a yep. multitude of reasons. The scores are gonna be big because of his performance, because of the effort of the bull, but it's big for the confidence level of a guy that has been so good for several years. That's Hit him with it. the numbers. Remember 86 and three quarters is in the lead. How about 87 points? And the Cooper Tires, the area boot bull rider now. That'll put a big smile on your face. Good stuff, Mason. Bull called Caesar from Deacon's Cattle Company. Here we go. Help him. Come on, Wyatt. Go. Oh, he needed that one. Doing your job, eight seconds at a time. <laughs> Rogers, that'll get him the momentum he needs. 
Good bull ride. Not going to be enough to take the lead, but still a good one. How about 86 and a half points? 86 and a half. And our sixth qualifying ride. You got to go. Here it is. Helping Chicago. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that bull rider can hear you right now. What a clutch ride right here, man. He got out of position at the end of this ride right here. And it was all there, but it wasn't enough. And you can see the bull score, the rider score, the officials docking at Janilio for being out of position at the end of the ride. But Chicago, he was the first man to get it. 83 and a quarter points of numbers. Good stuff for Janilio. No doubt if he gets by this one, it'll do just that. He's getting it. Come on. And Keyshawn getting it done. Great job, White Horse. Just flexing on him here in round one. I'll make you famous from K Bar C. Hey. Oh, okay. Now, now the question is, Matt. Well, it's going to be a numbers game. Yeah. Remember, right now the lead is 87 points. That's it. That is the number that you want to beat. The numbers are in 87 and a quarter. And there you go, brand new leader. Now, they meet in Chicago for the rubber match. Here we go. Keep going. Oh, Alvis. Alves looking good to start off this weekend. 84 and a half, 84 and a half for the three-time PBR world champion. Good job. You can put a smile on your face, Silvano. <laughs> yeah, Briggs Matson, 15 seconds inside that shoot is all he has left. Let's help him ride this one. Come on. can see oh, yeah. the results in the aftermath. And if that bull stepped on him hard enough to rip his shirt, you know it is going to hurt. Look at this. Watch this. Oh. After the story I told you, after what you just watched, and now he's walking out of this arena. Folks, I hope you'll make a little noise for him. is 40th right now on the Unleash the Beast standings. Yeah! Oh my goodness! And then, there's that. Show it to me again. My gosh. Galeremi Valetis. Look at this. Watch, watch this. this. He was seeing dust on top of the Sears Tower from that high up. In Chicago, straight up. He's gonna need your help. Let's help him right now. Come on, Boudreaux, let's go. Come on, let's get it. Keep moving. Finish it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Boudreaux Campbell. And the Monster Energy Superstar making moves. Watch this. Round to the left, and Boudreaux is locked in. Turn back to the right, taking care of business. How about the numbers? 87 and a quarter. Woo. Big smile, big celebration, and big move, because what does that do? Oh. Moves him all the way up. Yes, I mean, think about it. He could have been in 15th place. Now he is tied for first. Good job, Boudreaux. Right there, buddy. That is it. I said the attitude. You come here to this level, to the PBR, you better believe you could ride them all. And Boudreaux proving it to you that that is the correct decision. Take that re-ride. Go to the top of the leaderboard. And we are rolling on PBR Chicago here, man. This guy can do some work, man. Another rider now on the clock. That means the judges felt he had ample time to nod. Here we go. That is an eight-second showcase of the veteran presence of Sage. Yeah, and we could have mic Sage up, and he could have talked to you through that ride. Yeah. That, that's the kind of comfort, the kind of awareness that this guy has on the back of a bull. Like, this bull kind of bucks right here, you know, up and down, away from his hand. A lot of guys in this era don't like bulls away from their hand. That's a bull going left with a right-handed guy. Kimsey, it does not matter. That's why I think he's got a real shot at being a world champion. Well, his 85 and a half is going to get him right in the mix, and he's with Kate. Everything about you says experience, but you brought out a brand new bull rope, changed your equipment. How'd you stay composed and know it was going to work? Well, it just is what it is. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, you know, I lost all faith with, with my bull rope last weekend in New York City, so I had to change something and uh, felt great, so it's all good. Good start in the Windy City. Yeah, for sure. Craig. Sage's smile is all you need to see as the veteran gets on the board and joins numerous others here in round number one, facing prime time. Fielder able to steal eight seconds away as crime time goes the distance. Well, and this is just too easy for Fielder. I mean, a, a little bit like Kimsey's ride. He could have talked you through this thing and you know, this is a this is a nice bull ride here in Fielder. You can ride him any better than what Fielder just did. Well, Fielder, remember, first Australian since 2015 to win an event. He did that in Manchester before the calendar turned to 2024. But he really, again, right, another rider that just improved and showed his stuff during the team season, competing for the Texas Rattlers. Continuing that trend throughout this UTB year so far. We thought the sky was going to be the limit. And a little bit like Fielder, right? That's just an example of a great rider and a workmanlike performance coming together. Yeah, and look, a bull going to the left away from Eduardo's hand. That's just a really, really good job. Uh, that's why it gets so frustrating for me to hear about, well, you know, he's better this direction or that direction as a rider. That's not what this sport is about, riding a direction. It's about riding the bull wherever he goes, and Eduardo just showcases it right here. Eduardo's 85 and a half. That becomes the 17th qualified ride of the round. Get in that grind and, and be one of the guys. Well, listen, I feel like every year he progresses up to and into that number one spot. Well, partner, your words turned out to be very prophetic as he didn't just warm into form right there. He crystallized himself into form. Yeah, and you know, in a sport that can be so chaotic, 
discipline is the key. And Pacheco is a very disciplined guy. He's a very disciplined rider. Like the thing with his rope slipping across that bull's back a week ago, that's very uncharacteristic. He usually controls those little things very well, like you've seen him do here. 83 and a quarter, and here in the chilly city of Chicago, his nickname of the Iceman, very appropriate. Cody told me this bull looks like so much fun to ride. Hangs up in the air around to the left. Definitely got some air, as did Jesus. As that one goes the bull's way. Let's wait for those bull scores. That's that's a, you know, to Lambert's point, I, I get what he sees there. Like, that's a cool one. That's the kind you're always talking about guys don't sit down don't sit down you know you got to find the front end the bull goes forward you got to go for well that bull does none of that you can sit flat on the back side of your britches and let him have it cody hasos really doesn't get outwitted that often but there pearl action hands him his helmet he's not able to speak but i know he's cheering me on it's always been our dream for us to buy the ranch next door to my family's I want to make that happen while he's still with us. Kate, oh boy. Kate's report certainly highlights that for all these riders, there are things going out and on at home that can take their mind away from their job at any given time and certainly rearrange their priorities. Hummer, this got crazy right here so he touches the bull that's going to be an automatic disqualification tries to go ahead and finish the ride gets off on the fence right here but his foot is going to stay in the flank right there and watch this he's going to disappear yeah that's like uh remember that um video game mortal Kombat when one of the characters would go get over here yeah and pull him back into the into the ring that's what that was like yeah, you think, oh, I'm on the fence, it's over. Whoa, no, it's not. Man. I noticed you didn't try to telestrate any part of that. Well, I was going to, but he disappeared across the screen. Yeah, they need to give you one of those disappearing effects. Yeah, yeah. Alan DeSosa, it's going to stay a zero. But a, but a guy that again, well, here we go. Swearingen created eight seconds of magic right there. As we've got a score that may indeed rival the lead. Yeah, now that's going to take the lead, I think. I mean, Swearingen's going to be 88, 89 points here. This was a this was a really good ride and a better bull than than what we've been seeing. Watch it back on the Can-Am cam. This bull is spinning, kicking, a lot of intensity. Swearingen never bobbles, takes the outside leg out, showing total control. You're smart, my man. 88 and a quarter. We do indeed have a new man on top here in Chi-Town. Yeah, that's, look, there's a reason Dalen Swearingen won a world title. Um, it's because of rides like that right there. And there's the nine. It's Cassio Diaz who seals the deal. Bottomless pancakes for everybody as IHOP serves up a score. Hey, look, this, this isn't going to take the lead away from Swearingen here. But as somebody who competed in this sport for a long time, I really appreciate this ride. Like right there, as a big slip from that bull the timing changes diaz didn't let that affect him that that was that was good stuff 87 points so the judges duly impressed as well that's going to help diaz all the way up into a tie for fourth overall that's why these guys are the one and two right now oh, slinging it how about bringing it as our world number one goes down hard. Yeah, he definitely looks like he's in some pain here, and you hate to see that. Um, 
you know, we talked at the top about this guy getting back from injury and starting to really be able to show his best stuff. And bull waxing pretty good there. It's a little out of time, a little off balance, a little top heavy. Yeah, let's just hope he's stung right a little bit and dazed as sports medicine will check him out. And as always, you can look to PBR.com for any updates on these riders' conditions. Flight issues getting in. You land during the event. You're wearing borrowed gear from your buddy Boudreaux. What does that say about your determination to want to win right now? Oh yeah, I'm really wanting to win. I really kind of needed this. You know, it was, it was probably good, you know, missing, or uh, not missing, but just having the delays and cancellations because I was just coming to ride bulls and not thinking about it and just going and doing it. And it worked out the best way it could. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Am I hearing what I think I'm hearing? Did, did UFC Hall of Famer Cowboy Cerrone just throw the challenge out to Dana White's Twisted Steel to match up for eight seconds? Is that is that really what I'm hearing? 1,000% I'm ready. Well, this wasn't much of a plan. It was more of a whisper, and it turned into something real and fast in a five-month get your act together and get ready to go, Cowboy, all of a sudden overnight. My bull is a legit bad the last PBR guy that rode him, professional bull rider, lasted two and a half seconds. I will donate $50,000 to the charity of your choice for you to ride him. If you last eight seconds, I'll give you $100,000. Five months to become a PBR professional bull rider. Should be, sounds easy on paper. Cowboy Cerrone versus Twisted Steel. Saturday, May 18th, AT&T Stadium, Dallas, Texas. I'll see you there. It's gonna be good. The tale of the tape for May 18th at AT&T Stadium. Yes, Cowboy Cerrone, longtime UFC fighter, huge fan of the PBR for decades, but Mac, my oh my. Twisted Steel is the real deal. Yeah, and I go down there to the to the weight. I think Twisted Steel, yeah, he's probably going to weigh in on game day at 1,400. Cerrone, I think it'd be great if he gets back down to 170 because in New York City, he ain't at no 170. Hey, you mentioned New York City. When I heard about this, shades of 2011, Duluth, Chad Ochocinco trying to get it done. Yeah, and he's got the king of the Cowboys right there, the great Ty Murray helping him out. And it didn't help very much. And look, that's a world-class athlete. So is Cerrone. Look, I've got a lot of admiration and respect for what he's done in the octagon. <laughs> but this is way different, man. Oh, yeah. I spoke with Ty Murray earlier today. He's convinced not only that Ocho Cinco is probably the most superbly talented athlete he's ever seen in his life, but he's also convinced as we look at Brady Fielder getting ready, already an event winner this season, Ty's convinced that Ocho Cinco blacked out the second he got in that shoot. Yeah, and look, the blur factor for Cerrone will be real as well, and Cerrone is a contact combat guy, though. Uh, he does have that going for him. He's on the clock now, which means he needs to nod. Here he goes. Diaz outfoxes the bull as Gray Fox goes down, and Cassio Diaz for all intents and purposes, has now assured he will be number one at the end of our trip to Chicago. This crowd loves it. Yeah, and I can't wait to see this score. 86 and three quarters. I thought it'd be a little more than that, actually. That, I mean, that was a, that's a really good ride. Bull scorers were kind of low right there. And this little bull fires out of there. You know, and, and he's just kind of tricky. You know, he's wanting him in, then he gets to move in, wanting him out. Little hesitations there. That was a really good job by Cassie. You know, it's funny. You were talking about the bull, right? Calling the bull tricky. But what I liked is it seemed like for every trick the bull threw out, Cassio had the counter move. 
And that's it. He didn't try to move before the bull, right? He waited till the, he just went wherever the bull went. Hey, how cool is this next story, right? We've been making a lot about the Crimber family and their ties to the PBR. Now we've got another family to talk about. This is Court McFadden, who made his debut in round number one promptly with an 86 and three quarters. Well, his father, Corey Mack, you used to ride with. Absolutely, Corey Mack. Hey, this guy made some great rides. This is just one of them that we're getting to watch on Little Yellow Jacket, three-time world champion bull. Corey Mack away from his hand. Direction did not matter to this guy. Uh, yeah, made, made a lot of great rides. And uh, the ones on Mossy Oak Mudslinger down here, those are, those are just some really exciting rides too. Good guy right there. Wow, what a, uh, you could make a ticker tape parade out of those stats. And how about Court? As McFadden is now two for two. And going off of what we showed you about Dad Corey's accomplishments, you can bet he's cheering for his son even louder. Yeah, it, look, gets pretty close with the free arm right around the corner. But after that, this kid just keeps getting better and better every time I see him ride. It's going to be close right around here. This jump right here. Yeesh. <laughs> hey. hey, you win some, you lose some, and he won that one right there. Look, 87 and a quarter. He's now our new number one. Let's send it back down to Kate. <laughs> Two for two, and I know you get asked about your dad a lot, but yeah. to not only follow in his footsteps, but be getting rides like that at this level, what does that mean? Oh, it's everything. Uh, my dad has helped me get to where I am, and it sure uh, feels good to get that done at my first event, too. So, Great ride. Thank you. Craig. Yeah, what a great honor. I mean, right, as a father myself, Mac, you too, hearing your son say those words, that's got to mean a lot to wherever Corey is. And Court's not done. He will definitely be in the championship round as well, trying to enter into a very select club of riders that have won their first ever event on tour. Had ample time to nod, but there is the nod. Ooh, he got thrown. Was able to get his hands down, but that's not going to add to his 84-point total. And that means he is done for the weekend. Yeah, an old swing in it. K-Bar Seas has a good weekend right there. Takes down the world number one and, and then a, a talented young Brazilian that's pretty tough going to the right. And this bull just handles it. Yeah, and again with those landings. We've seen some dicey landings so far this weekend. Ooh. That is not the way you want to draw it up if you're learning how to dismount wherever your bull riding clinic is next taking place. <laughs> to your point, Mac, right, our points plural. Chandler's dream not only gave Mitchell ample opportunities, but when he was out of positions, didn't penalize him right enough to take full advantage of it. Yeah, and Bob, you can see a little banged up getting out of here. Hit the ground pretty hard there. But yeah, to your points about Chandler's dream, what we were talking about, you see it. Yeah, there's some direction changes in here, but look at the amount of time he spins in the air. Mm -hmm. Then he kicks through everything he does. The timing doesn't change. The direction does, but the timing of it does not. You mentioned, right, the landing. Ooh, ah. This is not a forgiving surface any weekend, but all the riders will tell you in Chicago, it makes for a hard landing. And, and you got to find a way to keep your rosin tacky and get that rope sticky. Fielder's two for two, so whatever that mixture he went with turns out to be right. As back-to-back -back guys book their tickets for the championship round, he scores 84. Yeah, it's good job by Fielder. This bull keeps wanting to run him back a little bit here. Watch as this ride progresses about halfway through it. His upper body starts coming back, wanting to snap his head up. 
does a pretty good job here of not getting too tight, letting it jerk him back forward, and then getting up there and finishing it. Hey, Matt, Kate brought up an interesting point about, you know, what Brady was talking about with his, with his rosin, right? I mean, temperature definitely affects how a cowboy prepares his rope, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say in this day and age, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to let everybody in a, a little secret, a little look behind the curtain about rosin. It doesn't matter. Thank you for not, that. Not if you're technically riding good. Like, it, rosin's neither here nor there. I watched Ty Murray my entire career that he was around for, Will and you could have used dirt. <laughs> now under 10 seconds. They may look at this, but guess what? It's going to stay eight seconds. That is career ride 509 for Silvano Alves as he keeps trying to get closer and closer to Guilherme Marchi's record. But Alves should stay two for two. Yeah, and what impresses me so much about this ride is you're talking about a three-time world champion that's in the twilight of his career and is still willing to put out this kind of an effort. That's, uh, you know, that's, it's cold, the rosin, this, that. That's a guy that still loves to ride. Woo! And it shows 82 and a half. The fight has never left as Alves <laughs> visits with Paulo Krimber. Eduardo comes into the weekend eighth in the overall world standings. He'll be on his way to improving that numerology as Eduardo becomes the latest to make sure he stays perfect. Yeah, and this bull doesn't have a lot of kick. When they don't kick much, that, that'll kind of want to either drop you to the inside, run you back off of your rope. I thought Eduardo did a great job of keeping his head down, keeping his sights and his focus up at that bull's shoulders. And his body is going to follow that. It's going to keep trying to get to that point. 85 and a quarter pushes him all the way up to third overall. Just got word that Alan D'Souza has declined his re-ride, by the way. Well, I tell you what, it was a very unorthodox preparation, but it worked on some level for Almeida as he makes it to the eight seconds. Well, I would think, like, we would maybe see some, tell you what, let's, oh man, let's take a look at it from right here and just see if there's any contact leaving out of here. Yeah, little bull stays clear. You know, I was thinking possibly could have a chance for a re-ride. He stayed clear. And, Gave him just enough that they're going to be able to not award a rewrite there. Well, guess what? Two down for it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 81 and a half. That's a second score. He moves all the way up to seventh overall. So our top seven all are two for two, which is going to make this championship round for all intents and purposes up for grabs. I mean, you definitely want to be either Court McFadden or Cassio Diaz or even Eduardo Parasito, right? The top three picks. Typically, the lefties don't get along great with him. He likes the right. Yeah, hard landing for Dalen. And he comes crashing back down to earth after winning round number one. He'll have to hope that his 88 and a quarter gets him back, and it looks like it probably will. Yeah, Brady Fielder, one of the few guys I've seen ride this bull. This little bull gives a lot of guys fits because he'll start one thing, and he'll leap in the air, jump forward, kick one jump, not kick a jump. Uh, not a very smooth one. Yeah, and sitting in eighth overall at the moment, Swearingen's not going to have a great pick in the, in the draft if he does make it in because he's got guys like Lucas Davino behind him. Very simple to keep your head down. Why doesn't he do it? Comes up 18 100 short, and that is a new look 
for our riders on tour, and that's a perfect showcase of how cold it is down on the dirt. Yeah, and go back to your question that you were asking me as the gate was opening there about why don't you just do it? Well, I think guys create habits at times, right? And, and sometimes you create good habits, you create bad habits. And anybody that's ever tried to break a bad habit knows it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And you watch this one. I mean, that bull is tough. It's got him in and out. But as soon as his eyes leave the bull, yep. the ride's going to end there. And for being in the fight for seven-plus seconds, you know, it looks like he's going to come up short here. And he is going to come up short as Alan Jordan, the replay judge, working with the replay center, determines he was not able to get to eight. So that ends the weekend for Davino. And again, maybe he's found at least a new fashion way to approach the cold at some of these events throughout the tour. I mean, you can see he looks very different than he used to because of that weight loss. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Once again, the Bulls don't care what your storyline is. They've got their own agenda. And on this instance, Wyatt Rogers becomes the latest to feel the effects. And sometimes that's kind of the downside of having one of these Bulls like Yellow Feather that you know so well. You, you lose your discipline and you don't wait for the Bull. You know, Wyatt knows this Bull likes the left, has a little hesitation, a little timing. And, and Wyatt is already leaning over on the left side of that bowl. Wyatt hobbling off to the side, sitting in 12th, and so he is on the bubble. But meanwhile, we're just getting word Mason Taylor. We saw him hobbling off the dirt a moment ago. He has confirmed he will not be taking part in the championship round. So I was riveted, I'm not going to lie. Southern style, there are definitely re-ride re flags. I'll learn to speak, hopefully, by the re championship round. Re-ride flags. Re-ride re -ride. flags. Well, I am. I'm thinking Southern southern border. Southern style, re-ride. Re-ride is what we were trying to get to. Yes. Thank you. Kicking through the fence there. You've seen the sign. It's come flying off. Yeah, that's a, that's a clear foul. And going to be another opportunity for Jesus. Little Bull just gets a little bit lost. Cody's doing a good job tracking him around here, keeping his focus. Kicks through right there. The old camera pit, they, they could get some close-ups of that. They didn't need those big <laughs> zoom lenses. In the midst of all that, I was given word that Bob Mitchell will not be taking part of the championship round. Pacheco's 84 and a quarter, as we showed you, moves him into fifth. This is Sage Kimsey. And that was the bull, Devil's Revenge, that broke Sage's collarbone in Cheyenne last summer. And even though Kimsey was hoping to exact some revenge, it doesn't happen here. No, and I really thought he was. When you, when you told me that earlier, that he had the rematch against that bull, I thought, well, here comes a little payback. And I'll be dang if this bull doesn't get him again and kind of get him pulled down again. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've been highlighting just not just the veteran presence of Kimsey, but right how he approaches everything. Did you say, though, he's still with the people that are dropping out of the championship round? Has Kimsey still got a shot no, in there? No, because Pacheco bumped okay. him out. Okay. So, yeah. It, this is going to be one of those events that it comes down to willpower. There's his second score. That'll push Sage Kimsey for the moment out of the championship round. But that just, I think, illustrates your point, my friend, right? Nothing phases this guy. Well, and you know what I mean? Like, he's not trying to avoid it. He yep. wants in this. Okay, it's cold. Well, let's get in the cold then. If we yeah. got to ride bulls in the cold, let's do that. And that sort of mentality is what's really kept Pacheco 
at the top for pretty much his entire career, you know, due to a few injuries here and there. I, I really feel like as you're hearing these guys come out of the championship round and stuff, this event is going to be won by the guy that is willing to block out how cold it is and how miserable it is and still go compete. In round one, he didn't have that kind of 85 and change. Well, that is going to be right on the mark. Good, right? Right? Because Jesus maximized his point potential as only he can at times. He's a little slow after the landing. But remember, he needs 86 and three quarters, and that's what he gets. 86 and three quarters to become the 12th and last man in. Good ride right here, too, by Jesus. I love the direction change. No problem up there seeing everything. Shoulders covering it up. Really good ride. So barring any injuries that are reported, Cody Jesus has done just enough to come back for only his third championship round of the season. High degree of difficulty. One of the better rides I've seen in a while with Sage Kimsey on this bowl. That's the third time they've been paired together, and it's the third time the bull has been dominant. This one goes 3.7. Hey, he had a day right there, too. Old Red Demon did for Boudreaux. I thought this one, when he just bailed out of there around to the left, this was a shot for Boudreaux. Yep. You can't fault that bull right there. That's, that's just a great bucking bull. 45-point bull score. It's a darn good score. Glad Boudreaux comes out of there unscathed. Top bowl score we've seen so far this weekend is now Dalen Swearingen. Last week, see what Dalen does. Knucklehead with enough of a curveball at the end that gets Swearingen seen stars at seven. This Dalen Swearingen is so dang tough and tries so hard. And he naturally wants to be a little bit back, Swearingen does. And then when this bull goes to stepping ahead right here, it really gets back. And you can see Dalen, he tries till he just backflips out of there. This kid never never gives up on one speaking of never giving up you know kenny mcelroy on the back of the shoots there mac did you notice him i mean these bulls are treated like family pets he was cheering his bull on and, it, and you, you can't miss kenny right on the back no. of the shoots but with extra jackets you can't miss him even more so <laughs> there, there he is and he he was very impressed with knucklehead on that out and sometimes they get in their own way. How about this? For those eight seconds, he is rock solid. Atop rock with it. That's what I'm talking about is he just slings arrows into the crowd. <laughs> That's a really good ride right here. 89 points the judges agree and we've got a new leader yeah this is this is good this bull's got some drop to him some up and down moving a little bit anytime it looks like he's going to get too stretched out he find the front end again great job that's circada's best score of the season and it rivals his best score ever on tour this bull was out seven times. Well, here we go. Well, that was just a question of Big Bank bringing the big energy. Yeah, he's a big, strong bull. You know, like he's not going to, he's not just going to level off and give you a sweet spot up there. You're going to have to stay very aggressive about his shoulders. Like, Kaik's going to miss him right there, and bump, rope's going to pop out of his hand. So with Pacheco coming off early, it still is only one man 
who has done his job in the championship round. And it is Kaiki's compatriot. There he is, Alex Cerqueda. 89 points. He's the only guy three for three. Right that you know what it's going to do, but you still can't hit it. Unless you are great. Oh, boy. Right at the eight. They're going to take a look at this. I started to say it, didn't I? Unless you're Brady Fielder. But now it becomes up to the judges. And think, one judge in particular, Alan Jordan. Yeah, this is, this is my heart talking, but I think he was there. Guess what? They're not reviewing it. So the buck-off streak is over. Brady Fielder finds a way. I don't think it's going to be enough to get him into the lead. And it isn't. It's 82 and three quarters. Hey, yeah, the, the kick goes away sometimes, but it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's 62 and three quarters. Fielder stayed on him. Yeah, he did. Let's go down to Kate's. Not only a ride, but breaking a massive buck off streak right there for Nighthawk. What did it take to be the man to get it done? Well, I just have faith in myself that I can get him right, and uh, thankfully it worked out. What was it that you looked at him and the buck off streak didn't matter to you? Oh, yeah, I just knew he's a great ball. I just knew I had to do my job and it's worth it right. It's worth it right. Okay. Eduardo Aparecido. Another guy goes off right at eight, but this, if the last one stuck, this should stick as well. And this is going to be very close because he only needs 85 and a half to move ahead of Circada. Yeah, and you know, the first six seconds of that ride, he's going to be, you know, 88, 87, somewhere in there. But as this bull raises him up at the end, gets him back. They are looking at this for time, by the way. I think it would be tough to say from that angle. It did show eight on the dirt, which means it does have to be pretty conclusive. Guys, hats are blocking this yeah. one. Alan Jordan. <laughs> There's the thumbs up. Eduardo will get the score. And again, he only needs 85 and a half to move to the front. He has not won an event since Everett last season when we were up in the Pacific Northwest. And he gets exactly what he needs. 85 and a half. He's our new number one by a quarter point. Just what he needed right there. And, you know, was going to be more. Got a little out of shape at the end, but got enough to take the lead for now. Sage Kimsey rode this bull. Almeida gets slung at the very end, and then that is not the way you want to leave. We've seen that a couple times this season when the rider goes out the bull out gate. Yeah, just a missed opportunity here for Ed. I mean, this is, if he gets to hand pick a bull, this is the kind of bull Ed's going to pick, one, two, and around to the left, and just gets to throwing haymakers at him here, and Gets really stretched out finally to the end of his arm and put down. Officially the clock says 7.43 and officially that will leave Almeida in eight. Well, the whole Kansas City Outlaw organization is about to cheer. On a cold winter's night, Casio Diaz has ice water in his veins. Say hello to your new leader, Chicago. Well, and you just can't ride one any better than what Diaz does right there. I mean, the bull has a great day, and Diaz just dominates. 89 points. What an exclamation point to his weekend. Uh, and just look at the control he shows. Head down, just moving where he needs to. Bull wants him a little out, moves right back to the middle, but really never even has to move because he's just perfectly centered the entire ride. Oh, 
McFadden gets bucked off. Polar Express, which means Casio Diaz has won another one. He becomes our first three event winner of 2024. Yeah, congratulations to Diaz. Just rode lights out all weekend long throughout the entire event, start to finish. A three for three weekend. Cassio, what a weekend it's been. For a rookie, it's a dream to win one event. You've now won three already. How do you describe your start to your rookie year? Ela falou assim, que ano que você tá tendo, né? E ela com um novato, o sonho é ganhar um evento. Você já ganhou três, três. Como é que você tá se sentindo? Sentindo muito feliz, grato a Deus por tudo que ele faz na minha vida, que ele me abençoou. Só peço a benção dele, saúde, para me vir lutar nesse estouro. I'm just very happy and thankful to God to just, I ask for him to, you know, to take care of me and keep me safe and I just do what his, what his plans are for myself. Back to world number one. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. These are your season standings. Diaz not only moves back to the top, but now by over 100 points ahead of Austin Richardson. And how about Eduardo Aparecido? The point total may be substantial, but he now sits third in the world. Cassio Diaz conquers the Windy City and takes home the title here in All-State Arena. Coming up next is Inside College Basketball. Make sure to join us next weekend as the PBR heads south to Tulsa. You can tune in for coverage of the final round Sunday night right here on CBS Sports Network at 8 p.m. Eastern. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.